Today sees the release of PXG Black Ops and this is my custom fit driver being built at the UK headquarters. And this could well be a new benchmark in driver technology. And this was that very driver that was built just 24 hours ago. And today is its launch date. I'm gonna be playing at the Berkshire and I'm gonna put it through its paces because although I've got plenty of Trackman data that says this club and this shaft is performing exceptionally well in my hands, I always wanna see what it does in reality. So it's a few balls on this warm up bay and then I'm out onto the golf course and see if we can find some fairways and just how good is this new Black Ops driver from PXG. That's some star. That's had a good start on the driving range, but again, that's not reality. Let's get out on this golf course and uh, I'm pleased to say the sun's come out. That was the first tee shot I've hit out on the fairways. Absolutely nailed it, to be fair. The one noticeable difference, I made it as a comment indoor yesterday, but I always think, again, that's uh, very hard to notice and be exact about, is the sound. It's changed significantly. I think there's always been, and certainly in the last generation, a little bit of a duller sound on the uh, PXG Gen 6 driver. This has changed a lot. Love it. Great feel, great sound, but more importantly, if you're on the driving range and this first one out on the golf course, right down the middle, not a lot of curvature in terms of that ball flight, and this shaft that I've been fitted for all seems to be, so far, so good. So sort of reference to club visually out on the golf course in daylight, I've only seen it indoors yesterday. The big comment for me is about the crown. They've gone back to a high gloss crown. I say gone back, gone away from matte because I can't remember the, if they've ever had a gloss crown at all. I've got it. I mean, I can't go backwards in what I've said. I prefer a matte crown. I wish they hadn't of. I wish they'd kept what they did. The explanation was they really wanted it to stand apart from what they've done so far, this Black Ops lineup. But I will say at address, it looks superb. The actual profile shaping of the club, everything about it sits really nice. I just wish they'd have stuck with that matte crown. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Hot Golf, the online golf retailer for all major brands. And if you want new golf gear, then please support us by supporting them. Well, we found another center stripe at a fairway. And again, what I'm liking at the minute is there's no sort of uh, movement in that ball flight at all. But that ball fight is also launching high, but without the detriment of spin and too much spin and that it's ballooning. And I spoke to Caleb, one of the head engineers from PXG yesterday, and this is what he had to say about what they're trying to achieve with the ball flight and the spin um, with this new Black Ops driver. So we, we've definitely increased launch, um, and from our testing, it's not only the highest uh, launching driver we've ever made, but from what we could tell, it's the highest launching driver of anything out there. Um, and we've done that by moving that CG back, like I said, but keeping it really low to the ground. Okay. Uh, a lot of that is has to do with the shaping of the head. So these heel and toe weights got moved back a little um, to keep them lower down to the ground. Um, we also uh, have some adjustments to that uh, head geometry to allow for more flexing of the head to promote that high launch low spin um, so overall it is a relatively low spin driver mm -hmm. and what we can have seen is a lot of players up to tour level are enjoying the fact that it's so easy to hit high that they are going down in loft and being able to get away with less loft which adds speed drops spin and you know, in this model, they're able to play less loft than they would in other heads. So yeah. the goal was sort of no compromise on uh, distance and forgiveness that by having a larger head that launches the ball really, really high um, without, you know, the effort to yeah, launch yeah. it really high, 
um, we're able to kind of promote something that has that forgiveness and can go very far. That feels good, doesn't it? The well, last thing I want to, a decent drive again to be fair, but the next point I want to reference is just about the custom fit process, which PXG I think are really, really good at. And yet again, a shout out to Jack who fitted me yesterday because the interesting point for me was that when I went in there, I started competing with myself and I started uh, sort of driving the ball or swinging the club head 97, 98, 99 mile an hour. And what I recognized was that's not what I do out on the golf course. So we slowed the whole thing down. I asked him to fit a driver shaft that was suitable for 94, 95 mile an hour. And I ended up with something totally different. Out here on the course, I've got such great control. So as good as that club head is, make sure you get custom fit and make sure you get the right shaft and head combination. And Jack, he seems to have done a very good job. No, that's that's almost like a that's, a that's a shot I did off the first tee and kind of like want to find a farewell or was it a bit of a cut and well 260 down the middle is pretty strong yeah the black ops lineup includes the standard driver a tour model a new range of fairway woods and also hybrids all of which we will look at very shortly right that's me done let's leave it all there what do I think well Big change for me was what has happened out on the fairways. The Trackman data suggested this was a very good driver in my hands. All the key parameters were suggesting that. But in reality, when you've got some tree-lined fairways, you've got the wind, you've got real elements involved. Well, for me, that's the real test for any product. And it's performed exceptionally well. I don't think I've missed a fairway to where we're at so far, 14 holes in. So super impressed with what it's done out here. And that's a huge tick in the box. But what I like is the sort of story is bore out, and that is that this club has been built for average golfers to launch high, but not spin too high that it starts to hover. So you're getting some optimal performance out of a club that normally a compromise has got to be made between one of those uh, two factors. And they've done exactly what they set out to achieve. And I think it's a real, real contender this year. A massive leap forward, in my opinion, from PXG from previous iterations. They've always had the ball speed, but they've coupled it up with a lot of other factors here that have uh, really produced a high-end driver. And I think if you're looking to purchase a driver this year, then this has got to be on the mix. It's one that you've got to go out and try for yourselves. Anyway, let me know if this is on the agenda, is this on the wish list? And uh, if you do go out and try it, then please come back. Uh, get in that comment section and uh, give a little bit of a clue to your fellow golfers. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.